and correct their season the way the Braves could, the way the Yankees could, the way the Dodgers could. They're not that team. Matter of fact, if this were coming off of last year, then I can see you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Here he is. Uh oh. You got his mic. Sarge! Sergeant Slaughter! Look at this guy! I got my Hogan shirt on! Oh, Hogan! How are you, Sarge? How you doing, sir? Look at Sergeant Slaughter love it in person! What's going on, buddy? You don't get that that whip or whatever it was that used to have, right? That what's that oh, stick yeah, called? The, uh, where is the little the whip thing that you used to knock the, all the jobbers around with? Where's oh, that the, thing? Uh, swagger stick. Yeah. Hoff, Hoff, can you build this I chair up get here? Get to the airport. Here it is. A little low there. <laughs> that, you know. That's funny. Yeah, that's a good point. You got to be Sergeant careful. Sergeant Slaughter, the yes, legend. Sir. Let's, let's let Hop right. pick you up a little bit, Sarge. That chair seems Sounds a little like low. Sounds like you guys right. had a busy morning talking about not. the Yankees and the Mets Ooh. there. You, oh, you a sports you fan? Know, I used to be a baseball player. A lot of people don't know that. I, I didn't know that. I well, still have the uh, world record of honest and putouts uh, in in one game. Really? What one level inning, was in one inning? Oh, you talking? Yeah, I was a catcher. Yeah. Okay. How, how many? I was a catcher. And I understand that. How yeah. many? Well, it was three. I mean, the, the yeah. record's tied by a gazillion people, right? I don't think anybody's ever. Wait, three put uh, outs? I don't think a catcher has ever put uh, three guys out at first base, has he? Oh, I see. What, what, what level was this? Is there well, documents? This, this was Little League. <laughs> no, <laughs> gotcha. come on, gotcha. Sarge. Gotcha. Are you used to call me uh, John Deere Slaughter. Uh, is that right? But, Sarge, yeah. that's like me saying I, I did a Jimmy Snooker off my parents' dresser and yeah. I won the championship yeah. when I was nine years old. I mean, <laughs> well, there's only, levels of accomplishment had, here. We only eight, eight guys, so I had to play first base and catch. <laughs> yeah. well, Wrestle- I, I would beat the guys to first base. And, oh, man, that's Wrestle- awesome. WrestleMania, of course, coming up this weekend, which is why we wanted to have Sarge in-house here. You're on your way to Philadelphia to go down there and uh, make some appearances or what? I am. I am. I, uh, I'm going to, of course, uh, hopefully get over to WrestleMania Hall of Fame and, and see all that. Uh, you got stuff in there? Taking place. Oh, I'm going to try if they'll let me in. What do you mean if they'll, wait, 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 what do you mean if they'll let you in? Well, you, you know, that I, door down. I was a little upset uh, they didn't invite me to Undertaker's Hall of Fame a few years ago in Dallas. Uh-huh. And uh, because I kind of found the guy in a box of tapes and and t- took it to uh, Mr. McMahon, uh-huh. uh, like a football. And under my arm, I ran to his office, and he said, "Sarge, if he, if you think he's good enough to come in for a tryout, bring him in." And Mark, so Mark you, Calloway, yeah. They so forgot I thought, about geez, that. He gets, a, gets in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I should have at least been in the front row. If I agree. Mentioned. It's like you're the baseball yeah, scout who who, exactly. who, who, who scouts Derek Jeter. Yeah. Get him in yeah. the get him in Cooper's Cooper's town. Town. Yeah. Plus, you're a Hall of Fame yourself, as we can see by the ring. So they don't they don't invite back all the Hall. I mean, I know there's a ton of them, but they don't invite back all the old Hall of Famers to the current Hall I of Fame think ceremony. They should. Yeah. I don't. I didn't get. I haven't been invited the last three years. I don't know why, but. Well, we we gotta Maybe rectify I take that. Too big of a space. So. Yeah, you, you, I gotta tell you, Sergeant Slaughter, I, I, too I, big what, of a space. What about here and right now? This man <laughs> needs to be there. McMahon, I want to forget about McMahon. <laughs> yeah. WWE, get your act and together and get this man issues. front yeah, row. What's the deal? So, it's Sarge, Bruce Richard. Yeah. Sarge, I'm going to talk to my attorney Ed Nussbaum down there in huh. Westport, Connecticut. He's dealt oh. with them many times. This is going to get ugly, is what you yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A few yeah. go arounds with uh, Mr. McMahon. Yeah, I mean, who hasn't at this point? uh you know, wrestler, championship wrestler. He didn't take any uh, shit. Whoa! Well, we can't, yeah. we can't curse here. Still uh, has it. Mr. Still Slaughter. So, <laughs> well, so Sarge, listen, I, your journey's amazing. First big boot of the day. Right there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're going to bounce around a little bit. Sarge Slaughter's in studio, and he's got the whole, ga- like, the gimmick. He's all he's all decked out. He looks great. He looked really good. 75 years of age. You look healthy, strong Thank as an you. ox, fit Thank still. You. God bless you. To me, you are one of the truly, I'm not just saying this because you're here. You're one of the most unique WWE characters because you never needed a belt even though you had it for a little bit to validate to get a pop from the crowd like you were an amazing heel I mean people loathed you we hated you and I hated you and then you were an amazing iconic inspirational figure all without a belt not many guys can do that Sarge so it takes a special uh, talent to uh, to do what I did without a championship as you stated I didn't need a championship my character was which drew the uh, the crowds in, but there were you know wrestlers that needed a, a championship. You know Hulk Hogan could talk the uh, chrome off a bumper, but he didn't know a wristwatch from a headlock. <laughs> yeah, he's not to lead him around the match. But mm-hmm. as long as he had the title, yeah, uh, that that helped him out a lot. You know, but uh, 
Yeah, it's just uh, one of those things where you, uh, I don't know where I got it from, probably watching wrestling when I was a young kid on my dad's knee. You know, he loved wrestling, and I, I watched it, and I always dreamed about being a wrestler. Always thought I'd be a professional football player, but, you know, my parents were farmers and didn't, you know, put money, any money away for me to go to college or mm-hmm. my sister. And so, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I was a uh, most valuable player of my high school football team two years in a row, and I was a tackle. I mean— <laughs> We, we, Offense or defense? Both. Oh, wow. Yeah, Two-way swords yeah. going both ways. Look we at We never left. Once our school song played and the national anthem played, yeah, yeah. we never got off the field. That's yeah, awesome. Have, 20 kids on the team probably. every second yeah, of yeah. the game. And, uh, it, we just, uh, it just was in my my veins. I gotcha. Guess I, I just watched so much sports. and that. But uh, one day I just, uh, a friend of mine was a sports writer, Bill Tweet, and uh, he uh, invited me to a, a training camp that they were going to film, and Vern Gagne was putting on. Oh, a Vern Gagne, who oh, he'd kick the was, crap out of you guys, Vern. Yeah, right, right. down the road the from dungeon. where I lived. I mean, so I said, yeah, let's go. Wow. BT and, and Sal uh, on the fan yeah. in studio here with Sergeant Slaughter. So much so, we just watched the biography, and I'll admit, so I'm a little bit younger than BT, and I don't remember your original run in the, you know, Vince McMahon Sr. WWF at the time. I remember the build-up to WrestleMania 7, you beating the Warrior, getting his belt, and then losing to Hogan in WrestleMania 7, and, and obviously becoming a heel, a vicious heel at the time of the, the, the Gulf War and all those different things. But you you were such a, a person devoted to your craft and wrestling right. to a point where it hurt your personal life. Oh, you, yeah. You, yeah, I yeah. mean, big time. Yeah, you got divorced over it. Yeah. You know, my wife finally had enough of it. She... She didn't, uh, the day I told her I was going to go through a pro wrestling training camp, she was, she was just, uh, going south. She didn't lo- like that at all. Not only did she know it was probably going to take me away from her and the family a little bit, we didn't have a family yet, but, but it also, you know, injuries and, and things like that. But that was the beginning. She yeah. stuck with you a long time, long time, but then the Gulf War stuff maybe right. pushed it over the edge. I know your kids yeah. and school and right. all that stuff, and you you, you did yeah. what you had to do because you love the business. Yeah. yeah, the Gulf War finally, uh, I think she finally had it with that, and I came home one day, and she said, we need to talk, and I said, what is it? She said, I'm, you know, I'm not happy, you know. What, what do you mean you're not happy? Well, you know, I'm here all by myself. I didn't sign up for that. Mm. I said, well, you need to go be happy, so. Told her to take the uh, 911 wide body uh, whale tail Porsche down to North Carolina, where we used to live. And we were living up in Connecticut, and uh, and I said, go down there, visit your friends. Maybe somebody can get you a job down there. Or, you know, she was a very intelligent woman, still is, and and uh, so she came back and she said, what a ride. She said, you don't know how many <laughs> how many times I had to speed up to get away from people, but uh, uh, she said, I think I'm going to take your advice and, and do it on North Carolina. Wow, right. wow. Well, well, you know, did you ever get the car back, by the way? It sounds like a pretty <laughs> uh, nice we had wheels. We uh, do that in the divorce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got Jeez. you. You know, Sarge, one of the things, and I, I watch, I love these dogs. I can't get enough of this stuff. A&E, Vice, I've watched yeah, every single yeah. one, even guys I don't really know a ton about. I've, I've I've really jumped in, and I've I've learned a lot, and I love it. I used to love wrestling. Not as much now, but I love it at my core, the old school stuff more. And one thing we know, all these most of these guys had pill issues, booze issues, real heavy drug stuff, a lot of issues. You also wrestle, used to wrestle almost every night. So I, I understand right. popping a few pills to be able to get in the ring and perform and do your job. But and if I'm wrong, tell me, you seem to be one of the few guys who avoided steroids, you were always big and strong, yep. but never yoked, like just naturally right. thick. Right. And I, did you? I, it doesn't seem like you, you stumbled on the drugs no, and the booze. No, How never, did you avoid that never, stuff? Never dabbled in it. How? I, uh, never even knew what a steroid was. I didn't know how they put it in their bodies. I knew that they were doing it. Uh, I grew up on Wheaties, man, and, and uh, that was my, I was a breakfast of champion guy. And my mother started me on it when I was, an infant in the in the crib, yeah. you know, and uh, she would get me up, put me in a, in a high chair, give me all these different things, and one night she put a bowl of Wheaties in front of me, and I wouldn't eat it until she put it in front of me again, and it got all soggy, and I ate the whole bowl. She said, I slept till 10 o'clock the next morning, so she said, I got smart, and I just got a bowl of Wheaties put in the refrigerator, and 
when you started fussing, I just put you in. She said, then I even got smarter. I just gave it to you before you went to bed. Yeah. So I, I still eat them yeah. before well, I go to bed. It's better than what a lot of parents used to do back then. They used yeah, to really. put, like, whiskey on the gums of the kids when they were yeah. teething. Your, yeah. your mom just yeah. gave you Wheaties and said, go, go, go leave yeah. me alone for well, a few hours. You know, my, my parents, neither one of them drank. Okay. And, uh, my mother smoked. My father smoked. But I, I never smoked a cigarette. Uh, and uh, I was just one of those guys that didn't want to get caught, uh, not be able to compete in my in my uh, athletic uh, games and things like that by beating, you know, being caught smoking or gotcha, drinking. Gotcha, gotcha. It's awesome. Like so I just kind of stayed away from the guys that, that did that. And uh, when I got into professional wrestling, I just basically was on my own. I had a couple of guys, Roddy Piper, I traveled with. Wait, Don. so you hung with Piper and you didn't get mixed up? That, that, no, that's no, all he no, was doing, he, Roddy Piper. Piper told everybody, don't, don't even get close to slaughter. He doesn't do anything. Don't offer it to him. Wow, that's it. You know, and uh, so it was just kind of the warning that okay. Piper put gave to everybody. He was a real tough guy. Like well, Roddy he, was actually he, tough. toughest guy I ever knew, pound wow. for pound. He he could throw so many fists in uh, in so many seconds. It was incredible. Oh, I brought you what something. What do we got here? What do you got there, Sarge? I got you something. Gifts. BT and Sal on the fan in studio with Sergeant Slaughter on his way down. Oh, oh it's fantastic. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Nice Sergeant Slaughter nice. shirt. Wait, I only see one of them, yeah. though. It looks like he's handing it to Sal. Oh, he was Where's replaced mine? by Hulk Hogan shirt, of course, there. Thank you, Sarge. Well, well, might fit you, BT. You, you, you've got one coming. I do. So, I do. We only had one in the car. I, I want <laughs> So, I had a merch. Hey, that's a good thing, right? Oh, Selling all that merch. Yeah. I want to ask it's you about... birthday? What was that? It's your birthday? No, it is not. What yeah. I, no, I said you're at a merch. Oh, that's okay. a good thing, yeah. right? Selling all it's that merch. It's my birthday. Yeah. It's, all, it's, all <laughs> it's all packed in, in Philadelphia. So, so you... We were talking about this before. You beat the Ultimate Warrior Royal Rumble winning your first WWE championship, right? Right. Purple strap. Right. Where is that belt? Uh, as far as I know, I have a, I have it. But somebody else is claiming that they have it, so I don't oh. know how they got it for me. <laughs> but uh, well, they could be replicas made. But you, replicas, you're yeah. saying you still have the original. And yeah. then during your run, I don't know. Did you change it to blue and then back to black before you lost it to Hogan? No, no. I uh, when I won it, it was purple. And that night we had to do promos because Hogan won the Royal Rumble, and he was my opponent for right. WrestleMania. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I, I wasn't really supposed to win that match in. Uh, the Royal Miami. Rumble? Mm. But uh, the Macho Man came out and nailed the, uh, the warrior with a scepter. Right. <laughs> and, and I had no idea. I heard a crash, and I looked, and I see Macho Man running off, and uh, Warrior's laying on the second rope. So I thought, oh, well, I'll pull him in, and we'll continue the match. I couldn't, couldn't get away. He was knocked out. So I wow. got him into the, uh, the ring, and I looked. He had glass in his forehead. What? And, <laughs> And he was completely knocked out. So I said, well, I'll give him an elbow. See right. if I can revive him. Oh, that's nice so, of you. <laughs> so I went to lift up his leg to, you know, and I couldn't hardly lift his dead weight. You could and see it that, if you want. By that time, yeah. the referee counted three. And so they so just I, changed I was, plans on the fly like that? Yeah, that's, that's how it all happened. So that night we had to redo all the promos because now it's Hogan and I going to Russell made So wait, so Macho of, just uh, deviated from the script because he didn't like Ultimate War, and he just he want did he just kind of miss or did he try to put well, him out well, with that thing? He broke his hand and his uh, wrist uh, about three months before that. Mm -hmm. That's why I was wrestling the Warrior, and uh, so Vince McMahon called me and you know, we want to do the Sergeant Slaughter return real slow and easy. Yeah. So he called me one night about three o'clock. He says, Sergeant, we got a change in plans. You're gonna have to wrestle the Warrior because he broke Macho's uh, hand last night. So I'm going to put you in all of his matches, but they're already in cage matches and death matches. Yeah, yeah. All kinds of different matches. So he said, I hope you're in shape. And I said, wow. I'll get in shape. Oh, and we no doubt that you that you would be in that you did. So, so you know, the Cobra Clutch, uh, the Cobra Clutch to yeah, me yeah. is, uh, it's an all-time move. I mean, the yeah. DDT with Roberts, your Cobra Clutch, the Sheik with the Campbell, just yeah. some indelible moves. Ma, right. snooker right. off the top rope. Right. So I and Sal didn't see it until this morning. To me, one of the most, it, un, but it's it's a subtle thing. But it was brilliant, dude. Yeah. When I forget who what jobber it was, you were gonna put, you had the Cobra Clutch uh, challenge, right. and Patterson comes in. Like the jobber's like, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. He comes in. You guys wound up knocking yeah. the crap out of yeah. each other at the yeah. Garden right. later on. 
But you held on to the Cobra Clutch. And now, Pat Patterson was a good wrestler. Oh, he was fast. Good. He was strong. He was nimble. Yeah. He knew how to wrestle. Yeah. And he kicked off the turnbuckle, did flips, did all these crazy... And you never let go. Right. If you let go, eh, it kind of looks weak. Yeah. Um, that set everything plus it was up. Five grand. <laughs> and plus, it was five grand. That set everything up. I mean, it, you know, you have to hold on. There's got to be real pressure to know right. I've got to finish the job here and make sure right. this looks good. Right. That was tough. Yes, I was. I was just uh, thrilled that I was allowed to run my programs myself. Okay. Nobody else got involved in my my work. And so a lot, most of everything we did was uh, element of surprise. Nobody, I didn't know Pat, Pat was going to, I knew he was going to interview me, but I didn't, you know, when I pushed him and shoved him, I didn't know he was going to jump in a Are you, so you didn't know that? Me, no. We didn't That's awesome. That. Keep that going. That was back when we had lived everything. You yeah. Know? It's all scripted now, thanks to PM, PM, uh, PM Punk. Is that it? CM, CM Punk. CM Punk. Yeah, he, yeah. Because he started the F-bomb, he uh. said, That's it. No more. Yeah. No more uh, ad libs. We got to script it. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, those were the things that we did. And uh, little did I know we we're going to end up in this match. We went all over the the country wrestling matches and never could get a a, a finish. You know where it, it won, won a winner. Yeah, countdowns, so disqualification. Mr. Yeah. Man, senior came to me and, and uh, said we're going to have a match that's never been done before. It's called the alley fight. I said, mm-hmm. well, what's the alley fight? He said, well, you can wear whatever you want to wear in the ring. You can uh, bring anything you want to bring in the ring. There's no rules, and there's not going to be a referee. And I said, no referee. He said, no, this time we're going to get a, a winner or a loser, you know? Yeah. So I didn't think much of it. Till uh, that night at the garden, I'm getting ready to get dressed and everything. And I said to uh, Ernie Roth, who was my my manager. General, oh, the Grand Wizard. The general, yeah. The Wizard, yeah. And I said, uh, Ernie, can I ask you a question? Yes, yeah, sir. How does this match end? He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, there's no referee who stops the match. Uh-huh. He goes, I don't know. I don't know if Mr. McMahon thought about that. So he says, I'll be right back. So I'm getting my combat boots on and everything. And he comes back and he just, Winks at me. He says, uh, "Don't worry, everything's taken care of." I said, okay, so we went out and had this battle, and uh, I, I hit that uh, top of that uh, ring post. And mm. I don't know if I told you guys yesterday on yeah. the radio, but my wife was on her way to you New did. York. You, you know, did that night. Yeah. I was bleeding to death. And uh. I didn't know what else to do, and I, I just kept fighting. I kept coming in, and that's what made Sergeant Slaughter what he is today. It was crazy. Because I never, I never stopped. I was heading back into the ring to battle some more, and there's a towel comes flying in. Uh-huh. And I looked at it, and then it fell off, and I said, oh, good. And then it came back in again, and I went, what the hell are they doing? Who yeah. threw through that? I'm not finished. Yeah, I'm not yeah, done. yeah. And so uh, people were kind of like, yeah, he wasn't. Done. Yeah. After that, it was so gory. And Sergeant Slaughter's yeah. with us here. WrestleMania 40 coming up this weekend yeah. in Philadelphia. This is great. Love having you in. After a match like that, you go back to the wrestling room, uh, to like to, to the dressing room. Do you, do you and Patterson hug it? Like, it, it was so gory and so bloody and so dangerous. Do you guys kind of celebrate or you, you just need time no, to see he, the doctors? He sent uh, one of his friends over to, or I think it was a referee, to see if I was okay. Yeah. Because he said, man, he. You're you're bleeding. I mean, we've talked about it. We talked about it many times after that, and uh, we became very close friends. Gotcha. But, gotcha. Uh, it was just uh, one of those things that happened, you know. And uh, Shawn Michaels tells me that uh, in, in Japan they all look at that match and try to tell uh, and teach their uh, trainees that this is how you tell a story in a professional wrestling ring. Wow. This is a, these are two artists that went into a ring in that canvas and painted a picture for everybody without a referee. You know, I, I don't think it's ever been done since. And, uh, and I, I don't know if that's out of respect that they don't want to have another one. Uh, but there's never been one that I've ever seen with a, a match without a referee, but it was just uh, one of those good things. And I got to check that out myself. Mm. All right, BT and Sal on the fan. And still watch the current product or no? You're oh, more? yeah. Oh, yeah, really? I stopped watching it for a little while. Uh, they wanted me to come back and uh, uh, be kind of a trainer and and uh, the drill instructor for uh, Lacey Evans. 
Okay. But the, the contract uh, had so many, uh, you know, things Could, that I couldn't, right. I couldn't sign it. The money was great, but it, it had too many things that they, they would own me the rest of my life. Mm. And I didn't, with G.I. Joe, I, I couldn't do that. You had that happen earlier in your career as well, right? Yeah, Which yeah. you made, you know, learning about that during the biography, you clearly made the right decision. Right. I'm sure it's impossible to leave the WWF at the time, but to go with the G.I. Joe stuff, which right. you made a fortune right. off of. Yeah. Wait. It was a tough time because I had no way to get exposure, television exposure, until the AWA called and said, hey, if you want to be on TV, come on over. We'll let you. I said, well, you let me promote G.I. Joe? Yeah, okay, I'll be right there. You know? Isn't that so, crazy? Oh, my God. It, it's, yeah. I, I, mean, I, I got a million things I want yeah. to run by Soros. I, I just, I, yeah. I, tell him, as soon as we went to break, I hit him with like five things. A Piper yeah. story, a snook, a, a, snook <laughs> a story, and, 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 a, a, a adorable Adrian Dodd, everything. Yeah. I hit him well, with everything. Yeah. I love yeah. this well, stuff. Well, and also, Andre, you wrestled Andre the Giant, and you said yeah. you were friendly with Andre yeah. the Giant. Yeah. You, you had to be friendly with him. <laughs> you, you didn't yeah. want to be mad at you. Yeah. And the one, first time, you were, tell, I, Sal, tell everybody what you told Sal and me the first time you yeah. wrestled him, what Andre said to Vince McMahon he, he Sr. Told Vince McMahon Sr., I, I want to be married to him. <laughs> and I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. It's kind of a little <laughs> Andre weird. making his move for what, you, Sarge. What, what's what's going to happen to me? <laughs> and uh, he said, no, that means that uh, you're going to be uh, wrestling him every night. He wants to wrestle you every night. Yep. Uh, you know, but, but, uh, there was a time when I was in New Jersey one time, and, okay. and Andre was coming back from Japan, and his plane was late, and the uh, promoter skipped. Well, he'll be here, he'll be here. And we were the main event, of course. The place is you know, sold out to the gills. And finally, uh, the, the promoter said, why don't you go out and uh, do a promo? And when Andre gets here, I'll send you out. I'll send him out and that, uh, the referee out, and that way you'll know he's here. And I said, okay. So I'm, I'm doing this half-hour promo in the ring, and uh, finally people are starting to laugh because I'm starting to be a comedian out there, you know. So finally, here comes the referee. I said, Jesus, thank God you're here. He said, well, you're in for a real treat. And I said, why? He said, Andre's blitzed. Oh, he's oh, he's been wasted. drinking wine and uh, on that airplane from Japan, and he can't hardly walk. And I said, Oh, oh boy! Oh so boy! With those, come with it. You know, he had the big afro. He's just scary looking when he I was a kid. Andre and, scared me. Kamala scared me. Oh, and the yeah. missing links. Those yeah. those three guys. Like these are all yeah. these guys scare me. Yeah. All right. So the. Um, to me, the promo is is really what separates. Uh, you know, listen, yeah. the art in the ring, Steamboat, fina- like amazing right. tactician, yeah. not great on a mic. It obviously, right. so you have a ceiling. If if you can work the mic like a Piper, like a Rock, like a Shawn Michaels, right. it, it's a different level of energy. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I'm curious who you perceive to be Total Sergeant Slaughter, of course, WrestleMania 40 coming up this weekend. Who do you think is the greatest mic mic man in the history of the business, and why? Uh. I'd have to say uh, Roddy Piper because mm. he did so much research on it, and he would, you know, he had notebooks and notebooks, and he would, while I would be driving, he'd be thinking of lines to say, and his delivery was so good. Another guy, uh, of course, is Paul Heyman. I think he's probably one of the greatest mic men that's ever been in the. Uh, and, and he's getting inducted this weekend yeah, into the Hall of Fame, Heyman. Yeah. It's about time. I thought he was in. I thought you. I yeah. thought he would be in by now. Yeah, no, but I guess because it's, he's still current. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I hear you. They don't want to. Uh, but do Piper's number one for you. He's, he's the yeah, best. Uh, best one interview. Of the better ones. Uh, of course. Uh, what about Hulk? I mean, think about Hulk, the tickets. Hulk, Hulk was sold. great too. Did you get along with Hogan? The Warrior did some some out of. Oh, he was terrible. Out of. Uh, he was the worst. Out of the uh, oh. fantasy world. Uh, right, but it, but it uh, worked. Almost, but uh, he very uh, seldom messed up. You know he. Well, well, all you do Nobody is grunt. knew what he was saying. Well, when you grunt and groan, I think any of us could do that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. How hard is it? Yeah. We'd have to remember a script. <laughs> right. Did right. you Did you get along with Hogan, Sarge? Uh, we were uh, business, you know, business about it. We didn't uh, communicate other than in uh, getting into the ring against each other. And, and, you uh, think there but, was like a, a type jealousy thing there, or uh, well, because your one heat time, at the the Gulf War thing, at, your heat was yeah. great for him, yeah, as at, well. WrestleMania Seven, go ahead. And yeah, one well, time, one time when I right as I went up against the Iron Sheik, uh, I got so popular that Vince McMahon sat us both down and he said, "Hulk, you know Sarge is more popular than you are. So I want to do a two two cards a night." He said, "Your popularity and Sarge's popularity." Uh, I'm going to sell out two two shows a night, so I got the uh, the uh, tag team champions and 
Hulk got the uh, Intercontinental and whoever else was hot. And, uh, and so that's the way it was. I don't know if there was some type of a jealousy there or not. But uh, as far as uh, I know, when he was on my bio, he, he put me over pretty strong and told people that I was, you know, over more than anybody. Yeah. Than him. He did. He gave you yeah. definite respect. Yeah. By the way, it's a must watch BT Any biography, WWE legend season four, episode two, featuring Sergeant Slaughter. Sarge will also be at WrestleCon down at the Sheridan downtown Philly, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, this WrestleMania yeah. week. That's yeah. got to be a blast seeing all the old guys. Like do, do, do some of the old timers, like I know a lot of no longer with us, unfortunately, but like does somebody like Don Morocco, does he yeah. show up to these magnificent Morocco, <laughs> like going back, back, they still yeah, pop up for these? Great performer, he great was performer. good. He was good on the mic yeah. and he was strong as a bull when he I, was tough when i first uh, started training uh with Vern Gagne, he was already in the business and, uh-huh and he was like an adonis i mean yeah he was pretty pretty shredded him and i said man i'd like yeah. to be him you know? beach bum he beach just, bum yeah beach he bum great great <laughs> oh man but then he he didn't like to be in the uh the hero. He wanted to be the villain. He played that well. Yeah, that fit was him. his na- nature. You know, he just he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just uh, that's the way he was. But great guy, wonderful uh, man, worker, mm-hmm. uh, great on the mic. You know, and uh, intense. There's there's so many of them. You know, and uh, even I watched my bio and and got a lot a lot of compliments on it. And and uh, the one thing it was tough is there were so many things that we talked about i did hours and hours and hours my family did hours and hours of uh, promos for it but 75 plus you know uh years you know to to put into a two-hour show it's tough they had to cut so many things out so i guess i'm gonna have to write a book and Maybe hey. do a volume because I couldn't put it all in one book. People would, people would buy it. I'm sorry, Sal. Yeah. People would yeah. buy it. You it, know they would. Yeah. It was terrific, though. As yeah. somebody, like I said, a younger fan, I didn't know your whole career and really know you from the WrestleMania 7 stuff. Yeah. I was never like a huge Sergeant Slaughter fan. Yeah. I learned a lot about you, yeah. not just in the ring in your career, but also your personal life. I think it was fascinating. Must watch yeah. on Amy. Yeah. Probably one of the best ones I've seen. It, I've it seen a lot there. of them. I've it, seen them all. Yeah, for me, it was yeah. one of the best ones that yeah. I've seen. I just wanted to let everybody know that Sergeant Slaughter is a character. Yeah. Bob Remus is me. You know, I, I never, like, I, I'm here as Sergeant Slaughter today. Right. Anytime I do a promo anywhere, I'm Sergeant Slaughter. That's who you want to hear. Who of you course. Talk about. So I've never, ever, you know, gone out of character. You know, I wear the uh, the emblems. I, I wore this. It didn't get on the uh, bio, but my uh, uncle gave me this insignia. It was his. And he served in the Korean uh, War, and he, he let uh stepped on a landmine and blew off his leg and one of his eyes and oh, some wow. of his personals. But he, he fathered five children and, and was a, a football coach and, and a history coach. And he, he said, here, here, Bobby, wear this in your hat. So I took the Marine Corps emblem out and uh, put that in there as as a remembrance to him, as an honor to him. Yeah, the crazy thing is, you know, and you didn't serve, and and I wasn't sure until I watched the yeah. bio. And again, yeah. it was awesome. You guys need to yeah. check this out on A and E. It was yeah. it was so good. And you didn't serve, but you strike me and you strike us. I'm sure I'm not alone. As the kind of person that would have made a great um, soldier, because yeah. uh, you're oh, disciplined. You're yeah. I I can oh, see. Yeah. You. I, yeah. I tried it. I tried twice. I went to uh, two different physicals. And each time they, I failed the eye test because I have a lazy eye. I was born with a lazy eye, and I couldn't shoot. I had to use my other eye to shoot, and I couldn't see. Yeah. You, you know, uh, I have to kind of give myself some credit because all those years when I took my glasses off, I couldn't. everything was blurry to me in the ring. You mm. know, I had to focus pretty hard on my opponent because he was blurry. <laughs> you know? Wow. So that's why I always wore dark glasses was because I I hid my my eye from being so protruded. Didn't know that either. What so about when you got blood in the one good eye? I right. mean, because you bled quite a bit. Back yeah. back then, yeah. everybody was showing yeah, red. Yeah, I was Everything always, was always very color, cautious so. about my eye, my good eye. And, uh, you know, a few times I got it, you know, hit with a chair or something like that. But uh, thank God I, I didn't go blind in that eye or something because oh, I would have been 
horrible shape. But Brandon Tini Salicata on the fan in studio with Sergeant Solder. I have a couple more for you, Sarge, here before we let you go. And we do appreciate your time. WrestleMania 7, you had talked about wanting to come back and the dream of what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be at the Coliseum outside. Yeah, L.A. Coliseum. L.A. Coliseum, and yeah. then that didn't happen. Right. How disappointing. I mean, to me, it was still great, and I think the buildup was great, and right. you lighting the Hogan shirt yeah. on fire, all that I remembered. Right. I remember being scared of you and, like, right. hating you, which means you're doing your job. Right. Was it ultimately disappointing, or looking back, you say that was one of the great points of your career? Uh, it was so disappointing because... When uh, Vince brought me to his house and showed me the layout, he, he sold me on it immediately. He showed me the, the prototype of it, told me all about, you know, let's break that 100 and with 104,000, we'll break the uh, Detroit record. And he laid it all out to me. So I said, I'm in. How are we going to turn Hulk Hogan into the villain? And he goes, Hulk, no, I want you to be the villain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm G.I. Joe, the real American here. What are you talking about? Here? Get here, so bro. He laid out the uh, Iraqi sympathizer, yeah. and he said, what do you think? And I said, 104,000? Put that medal on my chest? Let's go. I'll, I'm in. And uh, so he said, well, go talk to your family about it. So I told my wife what I was going to do, and she, of course, went ballistic. She said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> you're going to get killed, you know? And uh, But I, I do everything full force. I, I go all the way. So uh, I told Vince, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it my way and all the way. And he said, well, if you go too far over the, the edge, I'll pull you back. But just do it. You know how to do it. So I, I try to be the baddest, you know, just being an Iraqi sympathizer. Oh, and man. against my country was oh, bad enough. Oh, God. Right. We then, hated you. Yeah. Have you the sold night this in so Miami well. Miami when I won the title, yeah. uh, Gene Okerlund uh, says to, uh, on, a, on a promo, Oh my God, Sergeant Slaughter's out behind the building burning the American flag. And I went, What? Oh. Cut. I ran in front of the cameras. I cut, cut. Yeah, yeah. What's wrong? What's wrong? You said I'm burning the American flag. Yeah, well, they're just saying that I, I don't want to get killed, man. Yeah. I would never do that, you know. It was and, so, uh, it was that volatile. I mean, the heat was, we always hear the word <laughs> heat, you know, it, it was real. Same with, you know, whether it's, um, the Iron Sheik or Nikolai Volkov doing the Russian national anthem. I mean, that was a time where they they really depicted and illuminated, you know, America's enemies and those right. guys walking around the streets and, and the lack of security in like in Allentown, right. some of right. those old venues. Yeah, we, like, it must have been really dangerous. Yeah, well, I never, I never really, uh, you know, thought about it. I was so busy being in the character yeah, yeah. that I never really thought about. I always worried about General Adnan being on the outside by himself. So <laughs> yeah, I always had right. one eye on my opponent, one yeah. eye on him. Yeah. And I didn't know, I only had one good eye. So, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> so it, was, it was a tough time for me, but uh, we got through it. And, and uh, as I said, it was a very disappointing thing because I did all that and I went through all that and my family went through all that. My, my father used to get phone calls in the middle of the night your son's not no good, you know, this and that. And mm -hmm. he, you know, it scared him, you know. And uh, I tried to apologize to everybody. And uh, so that was a, a real disappointment. You, you mentioned, you know, Vince, obviously, a few times. And, you know, he's he is what he is. Yeah. Um, the Adonis story from earlier when, when he was killed in the car wreck or other other wrestlers dying due to over, over you know, just, just bad decisions. Was Vince ever the kind of guy to... You know, say, all right, you know what? This person did so much for my company. Let me send the check to the family. Let me help people out. Did he do that stuff oh, behind the scenes or he forget about people? Oh, yeah. yeah, he was the most uh, generous okay. man okay. Uh, as far as a promoter. Uh, he always, uh, you know, he was strict right down the line. If you uh, didn't pass your uh, drug test, you got six months or six weeks off, no pay. Those are the kind of things that he didn't tolerate. But if you got hurt and were out of for a while, he, he picked up your bills. Okay. Sent you a check and, you know, happened to me. So he did the right thing. He gave me a, a check, uh, let me come in the office. And that's how I found half the stars they had there for a while. You know, Mark Calloway and uh, X Pac and one, two, the one, two, three kids. Yep, yep, yep. And all the uh, stars that came through that, uh, what we call the wannabe room, it's a room full of tapes and stories and pictures and, yeah, the whole I, deal. I that gave me a chance to, to do all that. Gotcha, but, uh, gotcha. Uh, you know, I can't say anything bad about uh, Mr. McMahon because he treated me uh, fairly, always treated me good because I did my job. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I, I was, uh, he was 24 seven. He worked out and maybe once in a while he'd go to a movie, but that's all he did was re- wrestling workout. That was his regimen. And he's 24 seven. So I, I became 24 seven. If he picked up the phone and told me to go somewhere or whatever, I, I'd make my way there. So I was just a company man. I was, uh, I was asked a couple times, WCW uh, called me, Hulk Hogan called me, Jimmy Hart. Mm, that's Bischoff, uh, right? Bischoff. Yeah, sure. Come on down. Mm-hmm. You can have whatever amount of money you want, whatever you want, whatever you want. Uh, no, I'm, I'm loyal. I'm loyal here to the WWE. So I just stayed. So you, uh, lately, I, I don't see the loyalty being fed back to well, me. Well, that's kind of uh, what I was asking. So they forget uh, about you. You get a yeah, little bit older, they don't need you yeah. as much in their mind. That's not right. That's horrible. You know, I, I picked up the company when it was pretty down. Yeah. You know, and uh, brought in uh, a new era of uh, a 300 pounder doing drop kicks and, and doing matches that uh, a 200 pounder was, was doing, you know. You and reach was, out to them and they just don't respond? How's that work? Uh, well, I, I uh, get a call here and there, you know, they ask me to do an appearance. Or, right. Something like that. In fact, they invited me to, to be here today. Okay. They invited me to help promote okay. WrestleMania oh, 7. Oh, that's good. Or, uh, 40 for them. Right. So they, I they wish it was WrestleMania out. 7. I, I'm using yeah. it to my advantage, too. So I, Yeah, I, I but it seems work. like they reach out when they need you, and maybe when you need them, they yeah. don't always yeah, reciprocate. It's, like, it's a one-way yeah, street. Yeah. But I, I stay in touch with uh, Bruce Pritchard and, and Hunter. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Uh, okay. Not a... Not, uh, Everyday deal, but uh, if I see something good, I, I just sent uh, Hunter a, a text message saying, you know, I, I hadn't watched the show in a while, and I got to tell you, uh, it's back to the storytelling that I grew up in, and worked in. And he sent out uh, back a very nice message, and he said, coming from you, Sarge, that means a lot. That's nice. So that meant a lot to me. Yeah. You know? Last yeah. one for me, Sarge. BT and Sal on the fan, and then we'll get you uh, to put the the uh, Cobra Clutch on, on BT. Yeah. Any regrets? Yeah, can't wait. I want you, 5000 bucks if I wiggle out of yeah, it. Yeah, right. It's 100000 Yeah, it is nowadays. You're, yeah. you're somebody, we, we've gone over this, and it's in the documentary, by the way, the biography, a e biography, WWE Legend Season 4, Episode 2, featuring Sergeant Slaughter. You've dedicated your entire life to your career, and right. then the character, the evolution of it. You love WWE, as you said, loyal to it. Any regrets on the way that it's impacted your personal life? If you could go back again, would you change anything about your career and life, the, the effect that it had on that? Uh, I often wonder if I should have went to uh, Hasbro, what, what would have happened? Because I was told by a pretty good source that uh, WrestleMania 1 was supposed to be Hogan and I against Piper and Orendorf. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. But because I left and went to Hasbro, they brought in Mr. T, which made it even maybe better for them. Because then you had the whole musical they, connection yeah, as well. Yeah, the music Cindy in. Law, they brought the, the Interesting. Wow. In. So I didn't know who, that. who knows where it would be today if I had stayed or where it would be today if, you know, if I hadn't, you know. So uh, I'm just happy where I'm at. I, 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 I can never look back and say I made the wrong decision. I just do what I th- think is uh, the thing to do and even when you see the pain in, in your family whether it's your daughters whatever you see that you you know your ex-wife right. even when you see they, like they clearly when they think back of it man my father wasn't there or went through the right. you know the character which hurt them no regrets watching that uh well th- that was hard not being there for you know a lot of the birthdays and anniversaries and holidays and things like that but the uh, dancing recitals and all that i missed i missed a lot of that but uh they they understood they understood. You got to make the money. All right, here it is. Time now. All for right. the, get, you ready, BT? Uh, you know, Sergeant Slaughter in no, studio. Sure. Going to put the old Cobra oh, clutch boy, on yeah. BT. BT's all nervous right. during the break. I am a little nervous yeah, before now. during the break, he goes, oh, Sarge, don't kill me. All right? Now yeah. I don't get anything. <laughs> you sure going to be able to tab out? What happens uh, if I got Whoa! Here we go. Sarge getting ready. You're in trouble, yeah, BT. Partner, if, I'm, if I'm dying, help me don't out. Worry, I got Somebody you. help me. Take a couple more got days off. Got little kids here, some Sarge. I'm not looking to do anything out of the lines yeah, yeah. here, but if I can wiggle out you don't of it, have I'm going to gonna wiggle out of it. Oh, don't, oh, no, don't yeah, wiggle out. Oh, you let him take it. He's, forward, he's strong, this guy. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. Here we do go. I really, wait, wait. Do I really have to tap you? There you go. I got it. <laughs> I got it. Come on, Sarge. Bring it up, baby. Let's go. Oh, BT's getting right in the face. Take him down, Sarge. Take him down. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Did he tap it yet? Tap out, will you beat that? BT, you better tap out. Come on, son. You better tap out and sell it, BT. BT, BT, tap out, will you? Tap out. Just tap out. There we go. He's tapping out. He's tapping out. Thank God. 
Oh, I can't hear you. I'm tapping so I can't feel you. Whoa. Oh, man. There he is. All right. All right. Thank you, Sergeant Slaughter. All right, that does it for uh, Sergeant Slaughter. We appreciate you checking out, uh, coming in studio here, Sarge. Stay away from me. I don't want that thing on me. I'm a Hogan fan. a and Biography, <laughs> WWE Legends, Season 4, Episode 2, featuring Sergeant Slaughter. He'll be at WrestleCon at the Sheridan. Yeah. Down there, Philly. Oh, get this oh, guy. No, no. Slap it at 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. Friday, go. Saturday, go. and Sunday. Go. I'm a Hulkamaniac, yeah. Sarge. I don't know. Go. Go. Get him. Get him. Go. Oh, no, no. Go. Here we go. Sneak attack. Yeah. Oh, 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 he's down there. All right. All right. <laughs> all right, that was fun. All right, I think I, I think my next bro, Sarge is taking BT out back here. What's going on? <laughs> Wait, can I pile it? I don't know who to hit, BT or Sarge. All right, we'll be back with your calls after this. That was great. Uh, let me read some reads here. Our tab fair. Welcome to the club. Thank you very much, Sarge. Look at that. You see that? That's awesome. Great having, great having you the in. Best. This is awesome. That was awesome. Look at that, Sarge Slaughter. Our friends. One of those challenge coins in Philadelphia this weekend. All right, there you go. Sarge gave us a nice.